Hey everyone, I'm Yogi and welcome back to my channel for the Mount Baker Mountaineering Series. On day one, since I didn't talk much into the camera, I'm going to show and explain to you guys in detail what was going on. I'm going to show you guys how to create a rappel unit, a belay unit, and as if you were a climber, how to tie a figure eight onto your harness. So day one was a brief rock climbing course on Mount Erie in Fidalgo Island in Washington. So this one was mainly honing on um, how to utilize our climbing gear, creating a rappel unit, a uh, belay unit, and also the climber to tie. Some of the stuff was new to me and some of the stuff wasn't so new to me. Um, I did sign up for an indoor rock climbing gym in March and I will say outdoor and indoor rock climbing is completely different. I actually signed up for the indoor rock climbing gym to help me build on intuitive thinking on um, stressful situations and also to develop and uh, learn better climbing technique. I understand there are different proper ways of how to repel. Um, for example, there's the Z-hitch and then the Prusik uh, to add extra friction. This day, we were utilizing the Fireman's Belay, which Jota will go ahead and explain. I'm essentially that Prusik backup that Peter was displaying earlier, or I'm his hands that are still on the rope. So right now, when, if Peter fully weights the rope, I'm controlling that descent, right? I just let him off that next step, and I just stopped him from going further. Let's go ahead and get started on setting up the repel unit on ourselves. So the first thing we did is we took out our harness. This is my mountaineering harness, which is a little bit different from my indoor harness. One is it's, this one's brighter in color. Make sure none of the straps are twisted. And then we're going to take the waist straps, and then we're going to wrap it around our waist. Before I tie in my waist straps, I'm going to go under and get my tail of my harness and get my belay loop. So I'm going to take my waist strap, put it through my belay loop, and then put it through my buckle. Like so. And then I'm going to take it through, make sure it's tight on my waist. You really want your harness to be tight on your waist above your hips. This is what's going to prevent you from falling out of your harness. You're going to take the tail. Go ahead and put it in the second part of your buckle. You're going to push against that buckle, so you put your tail in, pull through. Now on this part is what we call the double back. You're going to take your tail and go back through the buckle, push back, and tie it down like so. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to take your leg straps and you're going to clip in. before you do any belaying, before you do any repelling, always, 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 always check your harness. You want to check, your partner wants to check, and vice versa. I cannot stress this enough. All right, now let's go on to repelling. ATC device right here, ATC standing for air traffic control device, and this is the locking carabiner. It's locking carabiner because the gate locks. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our carabiner and clip it into our belay loop and have the gate away from our brake hand. I'm right hand, but I shoot left. Next, we're gonna go take some rope. And we're gonna create a bite in the rope, like so. And then we're gonna feed it through our device into one of the holes. And now we're going to clip the carabiner through that bite we had just created, and then lock the carabiner. So this will be a little bit easier to explain if there was tension on the rope. I'm going to do my best. What we utilized was the one rope system. Uh, a couple days later, we ended up having to repel using uh, two ropes through our device. How this will work is that, say, this hand is going to be tight and pulling on the rope down. You're going to keep your brake hand always down. And then this hand is going to be loose. And what you're going to be doing with the brake hand is you're going to be feeding the rope to your hand. Then this hand, your left hand, becomes tight. 
your right hand becomes loose, grab some more rope, and then tighten with your right hand, left hand's loose, and then you feed the rope. Always applying tension. You're always going to be sitting back on your harness. Think of it as you're going to be sitting back with your feet on a coffee table. Orientation the rock is. So if it's completely horizontal, you know, it's completely vertical, I'm going to be almost 90 degrees to it. Using both hands, lowering the rope in controlled action. It's really easy. I hate to admit that because I was actually crazy scared. I was pretty scared. Uh, set to left. Yep. Here you go. Joda, on rappel. Remember not to let the rope slide through your hand, but to kind of feed it in a controlled fashion. And you really have to lean back on the flat. Done. The belay is not as different as the rappel unit that I just explained to you. And if you remember with rappelling, you always kept tension with your brake hand facing down. And to briefly explain this, um, if you want a more in-depth video, I'd probably make a different video, but to briefly explain this, you want to keep your brake hand down. You want to keep your brake hand on the rope at all times. So when there's slack on the rope, you pull on the rope. You go down right away to add some tension, use your other hand, go underneath your brake hand like so, slide your hand up, and then keep that tension down. So now you're the climber, what do you do? You check your harness, and then you check your partner's harness. For you to tie into this rope as a climber, you're going to take one end of the rope, stretch it out, like that far, and then to make an eight, you're going to take Bob, you're going to choke Bob, and then you're going to poke him in the eye, like so. So then you can get a figure eight. Take this end of the rope, go in through your hard points, your first hard point, and then the second point uh, for this harness, this is my mountaineering harness, I'm going to go through my waist. I'm going to go through there, and then I'm just going to trace my eight that I had just created. Like so. And then you can go ahead and pull on the ends. The one thing you want to check on your figure eight is that there are five parallels. One, two, three, four, five. Perfect figure eight. Now the thing that you see in the indoor climbing gym is that they tie an overhand knot. That is not necessary since the figure eight is a self-tightening knot. So doing the overhand knot is not necessary. However, in an indoor climbing gym, they do require you to do that for your test. So Make sure you do that for your test. One thing you want to check for too also on your rope is that there's one fist length before your figure eight and then two fist lengths after your figure eight. So give this a thumbs up if you guys enjoyed this a little bit extra to this mountaineering series and I hope you guys enjoy the rest of this video and I'll see you guys in the next clip. Yeah. This is uh, Melanie's first time outside, going up a uh, climb that uh, is here in uh, some park in Washington. Hey, I mean the best part about climb, yeah, Mount Erie. There we go. Best part about climbing pictures is it's usually just their butts. And this is no exception. <laughs> yeah, but you know he's super supportive of this, and he knows, like, yeah, he's super supportive. Cool. Yeah, which is you know, awesome. A lot of guys would be, and he's the type of thing you can do it when I'm like scared. And yeah.
If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have raced. I'm gonna use my other hand so I can burn the hair off. Okay, so <laughs> match. Keep yeah. it even. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Oh my god. I missed it. <laughs> That's how it's done. Hope you guys liked this video and give it a thumbs up if you did. It helps out my channel and also give it a thumbs up if you guys learned something new. Let me know and comment below uh, if this video was helpful or informative or interesting. <laughs> so comment below, let me know. I definitely just so thoroughly enjoyed my time on this mountain course so I really wanted to just share my experience with you guys. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed the day one of my course and there's more to come. So make sure to subscribe so you guys don't miss out on this mountaineering series. I'm Matt Baker and I'll see you guys in the next one. Alright, give me a high five. <laughs>